Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we have a very special episode for y'all to listen to. We're going to be talking Vince McMahon. It's finally the L7C's turn to talk about what went down with Vince. And SummerSlam is this Saturday, so we're definitely going to preview that. Uh, We have our wrestling expert, Mr. Jacob Mason. How are you doing today, sir? Yeah, I am fantastic, buddy. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm going to feel even better after this episode. Uh, We got the Captain Byron Mitchell. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. It's SummerSlam week. Can't wait to watch some wrestling on Saturday. And we got the head producer of the L7C, Mr. (laughs) Justin Ackendale. My man, what's good? What's up, man? SummerSlam brings out niggas like me to come talk. That's what that's what it do. <laughs> All right. So the way we're gonna do this pod, we're gonna talk about Vince. We're gonna get that out of the way. Then we're gonna preview these matches. You already know how the L7C does the matches, who we think's gonna win, who needs to win. You already know how we do it. The captain, Byron, you're the one who broke the news down to a whole of L7C. Take it away. All right, so last time we spoke about Vincent Kennedy McMahon, uh, came out that July 8th um, broke that there were four other um, NDAs that were released totaling $12 million between like 2000, I think five and 2015 or somewhere around there. Um, so recently, as of last Friday, Vincent Kennedy McMahon decided to retire as the head of WWE, uh, the CEO, and then it was announced that Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan would be co-CEOs, and they recently, um, before the Vince McMahon announcement came out, Triple H came back as the EVP of Talent Relations. So that broke on Friday. Um, I was very shocked because I didn't think Vince would retire before he passed away um so it was very shocking news and the just sent a shockwave through the whole wrestling community on friday only thing i would want to add to not just the wrestling community it was uh entertainment espn fox cbs nbc yeah. sports illustrated bleacher report tmz everyone was reporting on it when it happened yeah i even think ign had a tweet they did so let's kick it to the wrestling expert. Jacob, what did you think when you saw the tweet about Vince stepping down? Did you believe it? Were you shocked? Oh, I was shocked. I, I don't think anyone thought for that Vince McMahon would actually step down. I assumed, like everyone else thought, Vince was going to die at the head of that table. No pun intended. But, yeah, I was shook. I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't. I didn't picture Stephanie really kind of taking the fucking reins there either. And then we have the whole Triple H thing. Triple H is back. So I'm just waiting to see Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa have like an hour match on Monday Night Raw at this point. Fair enough. Justin, you had a very good point before we started recording about Vince. So I want to throw it to you. What did you think for you to bring that point up on air? Yeah, it's crazy that, like, Vince McMahon's actually, like, stepping away from, like, well, creative, because let's be real, I think he's still um, chairman of the board. He's not stepping away from any of that. But it's just, like, throughout the years, it's like just being a fan, just, like, learning about, like, wrestling history and shit. Vince McMahon beats everything. He beats everything. He beat the, um, he beat the, um, indies back in the day to make um WWE national beat the steroid case beat WCW in in 2001 it was like at the top a monopoly survived the Benoit shit Benoit taking out his whole family like survived that the man survives everything so it's just so crazy and surreal seeing like that this is what really took him like that's going to take him out the line like yeah i i agree with you cuz when you really look through all the stuff, especially the steroid thing, he was going against the United States government. Like he was yeah, testifying man. in front of Congress. Yeah, people don't beat like normal people, even like rich people, they don't be fucking fed cases. Like yeah. that's the USA mm-hmm. government. Like you don't beat that case. This ain't power. Like, nah, you don't beat those cases. Yeah, and you're and even you go from that, you had the years, and then like you brought up the Chris Benoit stuff, because people thought that was gonna be the end. Like 
you had a wrestler kill his whole family and himself. And then he pivoted to like the PG era because that's what really ended Ruthless Aggression era. But Mm -hmm. now we have Stephanie and Nick Khan. And I'm going to be the one to say it because I've been the conspiracy theorist. Nick Khan, I said it two months ago. He's the one who's made all this in motion. He took Shane out. He took Stephanie out. He took Triple H out. I'm the one who thinks he leaked the Vince stuff so he could get control because it came out in February that we reported that Vince was going to pick him to be the successor. He was just speeding up the process. But now I think it shit backfired because I don't think he thought Stephanie and Triple H were coming back. No, I definitely didn't think Stephanie or Triple H was coming back, especially Triple H because he had that heart condition. So I just thought, you know, we'll never see him in the wrestling business again. But if he did leak it, which I'm inclined to believe as well, his plan has definitely backfired because now it came out yesterday that Triple H is now head of creative uh, since Vince retired. So it's definitely plan of backfire. Jacob, what do you think about Nick Khan and Stephanie being co-CEOs? Nick Khan did not become the full one, and Stephanie didn't either. It's only a matter of time before the board makes a decision. What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with it. And with Triple H, I think that's the biggest part of the Khan and Stephanie thing is Triple H. Triple H becoming head of creative. We now have the ability to see... The cool shit we've seen in NXT, the original NXT, Black and Gold, the one we fucking love. We have an option now to actually see that on Raw. This is the first time in a long time I've been excited for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, just in, in WWE in general. All right. Uh, throw it to Justin. Justin, you know that a guy both of me and you and all of us know, Mr. Junior Nancy Race's connections matter. As soon as Stephanie became... Uh, co-CEO, she's like, I'm giving my husband his power back, and I'm giving him more power. You are a big Triple H fan, and it was literally 20 years exactly, Madison Square Garden, 02, when he came back, and then him had a creative. How does that make you feel as a probably the biggest Triple H fan I know? Yeah, I mean, when Triple H is, um, has his hands on creative in WWE, good things always happen. Like, I'm totally with Jacob. Like, just the like, excitement of, like, Vince McMahon not running creative anymore and Triple H like finally having that spot. It's gonna it's gonna look it's gonna look different than what Vince has been doing these past like five years or so. That's for damn sure. And I'm happy for Triple H. I mean he came back from the brink of death. He put his boots in he put his boots in the ring at WrestleMania. We know like he ain't coming back in the ring, but at least we know that he's gonna be running the creative for WD for the foreseeable future. Great. Agreed, and it came out that Triple H wanted an open door policy. Same with Stephanie talking to them. Now the Vince lackeys, because when they're all gone, they're leaving. Johnny Ace, Larry Nitus, he's about to be out of here if he's not already out of here. He was going to be the scapegoat anyway. Bruce Pritchard, who I knew, Byron, you were super scared because he just got elevated out of creative. Stephanie said, nope, put my husband there. He's basically out. The guy I've wanted out since I was five years old, well, probably eight, Kevin Dunn. His ass is finally going to be out of here. The only reason he has a damn job is because his dad saved the tapes from the old WWE in a burning fire. So his ass is out. We're about to have a whole new era. Um, I expect Shawn Michaels to get a promotion. Because, I mean, that's Triple H's brother. So you had the first Monday Night Raw in Madison Square Garden. And, I mean, there was blood, for one. Like, blood's back. That's a whole trip. Montez Ford was bleeding. So that's already a start. You already had them taking, I don't know if it was Roman being creative, but telling Austin Theory his dad isn't here anymore to protect him, which my jaw dropped when I heard that. I don't know what your guys' reaction was, but I bet Roman wrote that himself. Oh, I, I could see it too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean good. that was that was a line. And we're seeing the changes. We're gonna see what uh comes forward. It was kind of crazy how yesterday WWE stock was rising, rose all the way 10%, went from like $68 to $78 a stock. So we'll see how this uh, goes with Wall Street. Vince's stuff ain't done. Uh, We all know that if this case wasn't happening or these allegations, he'd still be here. But he got, he used company funds, man. That's the reason this all is a big deal. Yeah, that's crazy that, 
this is the reason that Vince is no longer with the company is because of so now five NDAs that he paid out. With company money. Company money. If it was his own money, this, I mean, this would be a moral thing. Like, oh, he cheated on his wife. But it's like, we all know who Vince is. But you're using company funds. And after, like Justin said, they were firing everybody. So not a good look. I'm so curious. Like, did he fire people because he needed the money to pay NDAs? That's what I want to know. Yes or no, when it comes to this investigation, I don't think so. I think they're think just so? like, I think they're just cutting costs for a potential sale. Okay, that's Nick Khan. That's how Nick Khan was going to be the head dude because he was like, "Hey, we need to cut these people to make more money." And hey. but Vince is still like head of the board, so if they like still, if they ended up selling, is Nick Khan even like getting any of that money? Like he's just the CEO. Like he's not like on the board or nothing. So I don't even know if he like gains the benefit from like a sale in that regard. Uh, that's a good. Let me actually that up. But I mean, he was trying to be the head dude. Like he was trying to be the head CEO. So like, if they did sell and he stayed, yeah, he's just running the company at that point. But like, yeah, he's just he's just an employee at this point. Like he's not like if WWE does sell, that's going into the board's pocket and the McMahon's pockets. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. well, I don't think he's done. So I, I think he's going to try and finagle a way to be that top CEO. Who Vince? No, Nick Khan. Nick Khan. He's probably going to try to get Stephanie and Triple H out again. Mm, good luck with that. I don't know. I don't know. He, he was successful the first time. Yeah, but you have speculation. But, but I don't think Triple H or Stephanie are doing any of that bullshit that Vince did to like even. Create an opportunity where they can get forced out in some scandalous way like Vince's right now. That's true. Um, like what Jacob said with Triple H, so being head of creative. And if you haven't seen that picture, I think Byron shared of Triple H staring at the arena. A lot of wrestlers are like, man, it's looking. It's, he's the one who's going to mend the fences. He's been doing that since NXT started. He mended fences with Bruno, Goldberg, all of them like. If there's anyone who's going to bring Sasha or Naomi back, it's going to be him. If there's anyone who's going to get some disgruntled AEW people back to WWE, it's going to be him. Jacob already brought up Johnny. He'd be the one to bring them back. Like, oh, yeah. He sucks it. Like, when it comes to business, that dude has no ego. He will be like, hey, man, we need you back. Like, what what do you want? I think that's what one of the reasons why I'm so excited about the future is that he can mend those fences between like Naomi and Sasha because Vince destroyed that bridge. Like if he was still in power, there'd be, I I don't think they would potentially come back. But now that Triple H is ahead of creative, I think there's a chance for them to come back. I think there's a chance for like the women's tag team division to get better because we still haven't seen those tag titles since they, you know, put them on Johnny Ace's desk. Uh, first Raw with Triple H, no mention of the 24-7 title, too. That's true. Also, Austin Theory was getting his ass whooped last night. <laughs> <laughs> he was the whole night. The whole night. But, no, I agree. People are going to start coming through the door. I hope Triple H does what he used to do at NXT, like where if it's a big signing or someone they're about to sign, they have them in the crowd and they, like, highlight them and all of that. So, we'll see. There's a lot to do, but Triple H might be changing things this Saturday. We got SummerSlam. Uh, This Saturday, they're still doing the Saturday events. Right now, we have nine matches on the card. The main event, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, last man standing match. So we're going to go through these matches, say who we think is going to win, who needs to win, and we'll go from there. Uh, Justin, starting off with a match that just entered yesterday, the Mysterios, Dominic, and Ray. Versus Judgment Day with Damien and Finn Balor. And shout out to Rhea Ripley coming back because she was having heart issues. So shout out to her. Yeah, I think um, Judgment Day takes this match. They need it more. And I just think they need the rub more than the Mysterios do. I mean, Ray just celebrated 20 years. Shout out to Ray. His position is already established. I feel like Dominic is going to end up betraying his dad at some point that's what it looks like it's gonna happen so i think judgment day takes it at summerslam 
Okay. Okay. Jacob. Yeah. Um, Judgment Day is going to take this one. I think they're just setting this up for uh, the Ray versus Dominic match down the line, probably at Mania. Ray's retirement match. I think this could just be the, I don't know, the start or part of the chink of the armor of that storyline right there. But yeah, does anyone actually want to see the Mysterios win? No, not particularly, but I mean, I'll throw my hand out there. I think they are going to win because I think Edge comes back on Saturday. And helps them win. Mm. I mean, I think the vignettes, it's time. I think he comes back Saturday, F's up Finn and them and starts his own feud with them. Or he could come after or he could come after the match after the Mysterios lose and they're getting beat up some more and he does the save. But I think Edge comes back. Yeah, I, I was thinking that he would come back like after the match, like after judgment day one, and they were like beating up the Mysterios because that's what they do. I figured Edge would come back and like try to save them. Um, but I think Judgment Day is going to win because, like Justin said, they need it more. But I also thought, like, Dominic was going to turn on right last night during the celebration. I was very nervous. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll go and judge. Okay. Uh, Logan Paul versus The Miz. Just a regular match, singles match. Byron, who, who you got in this one? Celebrities tend to usually win at big events. And they just signed Logan Paul to like this huge, extensive contract. I'm going to say Logan Paul. Okay. Okay. Jacob? No brainer. Logan Paul. Logan Paul's taking this. He was great. Mania. It's going to be great at SummerSlam. I'm actually excited for this match. Very one of those few times where celebrity matches I'm excited for. But this one, yeah. Give, give me Logan Paul. That'd be a good way to start off his career. Or his new contract. <laughs> Justin? I'm the exact opposite. I don't give a fuck about this match. Like, <laughs> at all. Zero. Let me tell you what. I do not care at all. When Miz and fucking um, Paul are on the screen, I turn to intervention. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> Paul gonna win. Okay. Let's stick with the celebrities then, even though he's a commentator. Pat McAfee versus Happy Corbin. Jacob, who you got in this? I got to stick with Pat McAfee. Always take Pat McAfee. Even though he loses the majority of the time, I do not fucking care. This will be a fucking banger of a match because Pat McAfee only puts on fucking bangers. And as much hate as fucking Corbin always gets, he is always fucking solid. It's not the best, but that motherfucker is solid. So yeah, let's go Pat McAfee. I'm excited for this one also. Justin? Pat's going to take this one. I don't see Happy Corbin winning. Iron. I am torn because last time I chose Pat McAfee, he lost. So, like, if I don't choose Pat McAfee, he's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Pat McAfee. <laughs> All right. Yes! Out of boy. All right. So, Justin didn't care about that match, but I'm going to throw it. I'm going to go to the next one. Someone he cares about who the L7C cares about a lot. Uh, Bobby Lashley, the champ, ooh, first ooh, the almighty God. Verse theory. <laughs> um, we forgot to mention, too, the shockwaves of. When Vince left, Brock Lesnar walked out of SmackDown, and we were already talking about, like, if he doesn't show up to SummerSlam, who's a replacement? Yeah, they're like, oh, we that. already had Goldberg ready. And I was like, hey, why don't they do Bobby? And Justin was like, there you go. But, you know, Brock Lesnar came back to work literally at 9.58. Yeah, and our little, like, conversations about that, if Goldberg would have been the replacement of that main event, Peacock would have got canceled, so... We had to find a way to watch SummerSlam. Because <laughs> it wasn't going to be on my goddamn account. I'll tell you that right now. Goldberg's in the main event. Fuck it. Right. But we brought up Bobby because Bobby is over. If you watch the last pay per view when he won, when he comes out, like this is a dude who looks physically like he could beat Roman Reigns. So, Justin, man, you got Bobby the champ. You got Theory, the money in the bank a briefcase holder. Who do you have in this? And oh. it's for the title. I gotta go, Bobby Lashley. Like, I, I just don't, I just don't see, I just don't see WWE having this nigga win, win that money in the bank and then losing the title within a month. Like, I just can't see that. I know Theory has the money in the bank contract. I know Theory needs to hold that money in the bank briefcase for as long as possible because I think if he ends up cashing in later, it, later that night, it won't end well at all. But yeah, Bobby Lashley needs to win. 
Byron. I agree. Bobby Lashley does need to win, but I know that like month title reigns have happened before, and I hopefully with the new regime that no longer happens. So I think Bobby needs to retain it, so he looks dominant, and hopefully he gets a main event push soon. Jacob, I have to agree with Justin. One hundred percent, everything you said was spot fucking on. It's got to be Bobby. And for the love of God, Austin Theory, hold on to that fucking money in the bank briefcase as long as you can, because it will keep you relevant. Because once you drop that, your relevance is pretty much done unless you somehow beat Roman. Yep. Yep. I agree 100% with what you said, uh, Jacob. And for my personal thing, I need Bobby to hold that title till November because a match that's not on here, which we're going to talk about because we're going to feel like it's going to be on here. I need Bobby and Gun- um, Gunter at Survivor Series. Yes. I need that, that IC champ so versus good. that US champ. That's what yeah. I need. And we're on that way. If they both hold those titles, we're already going to throw it out. I mean, if Gunter does fight Nakamura, Gunter's going to win. Yeah. Pre- just- good pre-show match. Yeah. Gun- Gunter versus Bobby is what I am, what I am gearing towards. Let's go to another one of Justin's guys. We'll throw this one to Byron first. Seth freaking Rollins, who you can make the claim right now, he is in the top three, top two, top one best wrestlers on the planet because he's been in his bag all ever since that break thing. He's been in his bag versus Riddle. He's put people over everything. I don't know who needs to win. I feel like Riddle needs to win this more, but Seth actually has the most losses right now this year. Byron, who do you have winning? I have Seth freaking Rollins winning because he, like you said, has been in his bag this whole year, ever since that Bray Wyatt Hell in a Cell match that was just terrible. But he's been in his bag this year. He's done great character work. His matches have been fantastic, especially that trilogy against Cody Rhodes. Um, He hasn't really won a big pay-per-view match this year. So I think this is going to be his time to shine. him to win. I think he, like I said, I think he needs it more more than Riddle. I've, yeah, I'm going to go Seth. Seth Rollins still right now the only person to not lose to Roman Reigns in the past two years. Mm-hmm. Justin, this is your guy too, Seth. What do you got here with him and Riddle? Oh, I love Seth Rollins, man. Him doing this well reminds me of 2015 all over again. I think he's going to end up winning because WWE loves him, but I think real real needs it more honestly. Without Randy there, I thought the momentum was going towards him winning the money in the bank, and then mm-hmm. Theory won that. So mm-hmm. I think Riddle needs that momentum behind him again, and being Seth Rollins at SummerSlam would definitely help towards that. Hey man, you said WWE loves him, and you're right. And now his his surrogate father is in charge of creative, so it could be something. We could be seeing Seth, like you said, 2015 all over again. Yeah. Jacob, who do you got? I'm kind of torn on this one because I feel like both of them deserve to win. So what I really want is just an absolute knockdown fucking match where at the end you're both, both everyone's like, yeah, everyone fucking won, even though someone technically lost. Mm -hmm. Because let's be real, Seth has fucking carried this company. Yes. This entire fucking year. But I'm such a Matt fucking Riddle fan that I really want Matt Riddle to win. And like Justin said, Matt Riddle needs the win more, but I Mm -hmm. feel like Seth also needs it just because he's done such fucking great work. So I'm kind of torn. I'm going to go ahead and say fucking Seth, but I'd take either one. Before you you speak, it's probably going to be match of the night. Ooh. Oh, that's SummerSlam. It's probably going to be the best match. Nope, I think the next match will be the best match. Oh, I, don't, I don't think they're going to be able to do two pay per views in a row. You already know. You already know where I'm oh, going. No. I already know I where you're going. I feel like Riddle and um, Seth going to be motivated. I don't know. We can't, um, we can't have uh, niggas still in the show two pay per views. Oh, no. No. Logan Paul and Miz as the match of the night, Jacob. I'm <laughs> telling you, everyone, y'all, see, as soon as I said the next match, but. I just want to say before that, a year ago, this I can't believe this match is happening. Because Matthew Frederick Riddle and whatever Seth's <laughs> real name is, 
They had re- names. <laughs> yeah, bro, because Those they names? had Colby, Colby, Daniel Lopez. They had real beef. This was real. They did. They like Seth's like, I will never work with this dude until Matt Riddle got caught cheating, got a divorce, left that girl, and now they could work together. It's crazy. Because his wife yeah. is talking about Becky. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I already threw my card in this. What I think is going to be the map. The Usos, Jimmy and Jay, Street Profits, Dawkins, Ford, Tag Team Championships. Don't know why. Well, I guess because he's from 10. Jeff Jarrett, the special guest referee. Slap nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, who, well, we all, who needs to win this and who's going to win this? Why the fuck is, I, I know they're in Nashville, but let's be real. Why the fuck is Jeff Jarrett there? No business for him to be no be in, that, be in that match. I wanted it to be Omos or something. Like <laughs> I wanted it to be him so bad. First off, Jeff Jarrett should be focusing on trying to figure out how not to kill Ric Flair in his last match. Oh, that's actually the day after, isn't it? Yeah, that's Sunday. Yeah, that's yeah. Next Jesus. Fucking... Yeah. So, uh, <sighs> it. I really, really fucking want it to be the goddamn Street Profits. I do. Street Profits have absolutely fucking kicked ass. But I don't think they should end the storyline of the Usos and the Bloodline holding all the fucking titles and just being the fucking top tier fucking talent that they are. I am extremely fucking torn here. Mm. That being said, I'm flip a fucking coin either, either way. Either way, it's right. It's good fucking booking. But fuck it, let's go Street Profits because it's the fucking Street Profits. If they win, they will have the biggest pop of the night. Yeah, hands down. Byron? I have to go with the Street Profits that they need to win because that last match that they had at Money in the Bank was absolute fire. Definitely the match of that card. And the Street Profits are just so damn good. Especially Montez Ford and the way he just jumps over the turnbuckle is like my favorite spot that he ever does. Angelo Dawkins is athletic as hell as well. Usos are great tag team. They've been a great tag team for the last however many years that they've been in, in the WWE. One of the best um, four in the world right now. And one of the best four in the world. So I think definitely the Street Profits need to win and I am a hoping that they win. But I think the Usos are going to win because, like you said, I think it was you said it on our last podcast, they're not going to drop a title until Roman does. Justin? And I got to go to Street Profits here. It's time. The Usos will get the, those titles right back if it comes down to it. Roman might help them out getting them back, but the Street Profits have to win you can't have you can't have them um lose two pay-per-views in a row not in this spot right now when shit how long have the usos had those belts over a year right yep yeah over a year yeah it, it's time the usos are not roman reigns uh, they're just his cousin <laughs> yeah, like, uh, nope. my i'm probably gonna lose on the sheet because i'm gonna probably put the street profits on the, on the i mean i kick I, sheet. but here's the thing i i agree the street profits they need to win and I'm torn because I literally just said last podcast, they're not losing those titles till Roman loses. But my other thing now, because he's getting momentum, if the if Jacob's thing doesn't happen next year, Vegas is going to have Montez Ford as the favorite to win the Royal Rumble. There's a lot of talk about his singles push, and I, I don't know if they're long for this world, the Street Profits. Because Montez might break out and have the single run. We got to see how new creative cares about their tag team division. That's true, that, If that's the case. Because watching AEW weekly, you you can see like the care that they put into their tag team division. And mm-hmm. WWE just does not give a flying fuck. Mm-hmm. So, like... If we if we still go the trajectory of not giving a fuck, I can definitely see what Martin says happening. Like Montez Ford ends up winning the Royal Rumble is is a single star, but if it switches up and like they start giving a fuck more, like he can like build more momentum as like a tag team champion and then like 
whenever they lose those belts, then like make the push towards it. I agree. Cause I know Bayern, me and you have talked about those rumors are a lot because they have been swirling. They have been swirling like the last couple of months, ever since Montez Ford has bulked up like out of nowhere. He like his physique is like crazy right now. I could definitely see him being a main event star. Cause like when I was watching that six man tag match, like just as his presence in the ring is amazing. Like that spot where he just looked at Roman Reigns and said, acknowledge me. I was like, yeah, put the strap on this man. And then he was bleeding the entire, like, half of the match and just looked badass. Jacob, what do you think about Montez's potential breakup? And this is obviously if your thing doesn't happen and Dwayne shows up next year. All right, first off, we all know Dwayne is showing up. Second <laughs> off, um, I think I think, I think think everyone keeps talking about, like, Montez being, like, Yes, Montez, I, I would say, is the breakout star of the Street Profits, but Do- Dawkins is... Yes, he can go. He can go. Fucking awesome. That dude mm-hmm. can fucking go like nobody's business. Um, Something else. Everyone keeps talking about, like, and I, maybe I've said it before in the past. I don't remember. But saying, like, the Usos aren't going to lose until Roman loses. I don't think that's the fucking case. I think the Usos are going to lose their titles before Roman. And I think Roman's going to get pissy and then start beating down the Usos verbally, emotionally, all that jazz. And then you're going to see the Usos end up turning on Roman. And Roman's going to end up being alone. And then when Roman is alone, that's when he is going to lose his title. That's how that's going to work out. No doubt right there. So Mm -hmm. this, I mean, they have two titles. They can lose one, no problem. So So, you're you're saying it's going to go back to when Roman first started being the tribal chief because he was beefing with those with his cousins i remember which one of them, i think it was jay when he's like i hate you and like yeah it was jay yeah and then they went from that to falling in line so you think it's going to go back to that yeah i i think you're going to end up seeing long term the usos turning on roman and are going to end up screwing him over just because i th- that that just makes sense to me long term storyline book but montez ford back to your original subject Montez Ford by himself. Who wouldn't want that? But at the same time, Justin's completely right when he said he's going to get more momentum if he holds those titles. Mm -hmm. Make make him look strong because let's be real, he's not doing anything until minimal. Royal Rumble, but let's be real, it'll be after Mania is when he will get his push. So give him the titles now. Make him look strong. Prep him up to be the next guy. I agree. I agree. Let's go to Montez's wife, someone who this podcast has supported and knew the stardom since day one. Uh, Bianca Belair going against one of the four horse women, the man, Becky Lynch. Becky match, you got to start with Byron. Byron, this is for the Raw Tag Team. I mean, the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, last year, Becky Lynch shocked the world, came back, beat Bianca in 26 seconds. Everyone had something to say. What do you have for this match? It's always tough with a horsewoman involved. It's always tough with a horsewoman involved. Think. I'm not going to say Bianca needs this more because she's been a superstar like since her WrestleMania match with Sasha Banks last year, even before that, the Survivor Series. So I'm not going to say Bianca needs this more, but I think she needs to win it more to extend her title reign as Raw Women's Champion. But it's a four horsewoman, and it's Becky, and it's Big Match Bex. I, I'm going to say Bianca because she needs to solidify this title reign. Justin, this is this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Bianca um, beat Becky at Mania, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the best matches of match. night one. Yep. Yeah. Um. That definitely. Makes me really take Bianca again, but I gotta take Bianca. She has to truly redeem herself from that um summer seven performance where she got screwed. So yeah, I'm taking Bianca. Jacob, okay. I everyone's saying like this is hard. I don't think this is hard at all. I think it's fucking Bianca Belair. Why is or how many matches has Becky and Bianca had now since Bianca won the title back from her? Like zero, zero matches. Zero. They haven't had a rematch. 
They never had a rematch. They didn't wrestle at Money in the because she wrestled Carmella. Because remember, it was supposed to be Rhea Ripley. It was supposed to be Rhea Ripley, and then she had the heart issues. And before that, it was supposed to be Naomi or Sasha, and then they walked out. They haven't. She's she hasn't had a rematch. All right. Yeah, because wasn't that a triple threat at Hell in a Cell, like with Bianca, Asuka, and yeah, it was just three. Becky. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And Asuka took. So they the haven't had a single one on one rematch. All right. Does it make? To me, it makes absolutely zero sense for Becky to get the title back. Agreed. Like, what? What is she going to do with it? Compared to what can Bianca Belair do with it? Oh, I mean, I have some. I, this goes into the next match. We have well, baby so faces for Becky Lynch to go up against, other than Bianca. Uh, well, on Raw, Triple H is turning Lexi Kaufman back to the real Alexa Bliss. Because if you saw her promo, she's like, I need to remind these people who the hell I am. I saw so, that. Yes. So she's coming, which is good. As a heel? I don't know. I don't know. Baby face? I would say so baby. Like, I think baby. It should be baby face because, like, really, Bianca's like the only baby face on Raw. Because if you drop Asuka. in Asuka. On Asuka, yeah. So, like, those are the two. I think Bliss has to come back as a baby face. But there's too many. I feel like there's too many heel. Well, people. she's up. She's up next, and she might win the strap because it it has been a long time coming for her. The shit, Becky then might win the match. Then I don't think they're going to do baby face on baby face. I don't think the reason Jacob that we said like it's it's always tough with them because we're going to talk about the next match. We all sat here a year ago. It was like, oh, there's no way Ronda Rousey's going to come back from the Royal Rumble and lose a, and lose to Charlotte Flair. And this whole podcast was wrong. And so it's just very, one of those very rare moments. I, I mean, there's <laughs> been some matches here. Time. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's been some matches where, but I agree. I think Bianca needs to win. But when Becky came back, I didn't think she beat her in 26 seconds. But I, I but like Justin just said, like, like but Justin and Byron, there's Bianca and Oscar are the only heels. Oscar's working limited stuff. Bianca's like full time out there. I mean, only baby faces. I'm sorry. So we do need another baby face, and it's probably going to be Bliss. But then, it, are you going to do baby face, baby face? It's all what their what their plans are. Or, I mean, do we get to someone come up? Now Triple H is in charge. Is, is it Io Shirai's time to finally come up before they let her go? I hope she comes up because she could be another baby face that they could add to the roster. Because I don't think Bianca's having this title till and all the way to like Royal Rumble. I don't think so. No, she's gonna lose it somewhere between SummerSlam and Royal Rumble. I no. think Bianca wins, mm-hmm. and then Rhea gets the belt between SummerSlam that, and Survivor Series. I actually like that because then, then you give legitimacy to that group. Yeah, then mm-hmm. and then Rhea ends up going against Alexa Bliss as. He, as the heel, Alexa mm-hmm. the baby face, and then we go, and then we see there. That's what I think is going to happen. That's my I prediction. Actually, I I really like that because, like you said, it was supposed to be Rhea Money in the Bank. Or or what if we get fucking at Survivor Series, Ray Ripley versus Liv fucking Morgan? Uh, well, that would be. I'll make it. That out. would be good. Well, but since we're Saturday. since we're already bring, since we're bringing it out, is, Rhea, is Liv even? That's like you. Let's go into it. Is Liv even making it out on Saturday? Yes. Uh-huh. I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just say exactly what I said in the last podcast. It's going to look like Ronda's going to win, and out comes the queen. She's going to interfere. She's going to fucking take out Ronda, and they're going to have a couple matches, and then fucking Charlotte's going to win it down the road after Survivor Series. There you go. It's who done. Wants, who I like it. Go? I like it, but like this is WWE we're talking about. I know Vince is out now, but like it's hard to predict what they're gonna do. It's hard what they're gonna predict. I mean, they had like Liv had her moment. Do they really care about her holding the belt for that long? I mean, shit, they probably thought they already built a star with just her winning beating Ronda once. Like, does she have to win it again? I don't know. Like, I don't I, I can see him going back to Ronda and then uh, and then and then running the Ronda Charlotte um 
train into the ground like they always do. Before Byron goes, I want to throw out this time last year, we were in the same situation where Nikki cashed in, held it for a month. She had her moment, and then she was the one tapping out to Charlotte at SummerSlam. Almost, we're almost in that same thing again. I this maybe I think, a think Liv's more over than Nikki though. She, yeah, she I was is. just about to say that she <laughs> is, but but this is, I mean, but it's Charlotte, but this is Ronda Rousey. Is is Liv Morgan like? Are they going to give Liv Morgan two wins against Ronda Rousey when no one else has two wins? Yes, because everyone's going to look strong if you do it the way I said. What if it doesn't go that way? Well, then that's fucking dumb. <laughs> because what if it's the same thing like Edge? What if Charlotte comes out after Ronda makes her tap? I don't think so. It's going to be before. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm willing. To, I'd put money on it. You put money on that. I put money. I on bet it. twenty right now. I'll take. I'll take <laughs> Ronda right now. <laughs> That she, what, oh, the, I don't, I don't believe in live that much to put my hard on money on her. Fuck that. I'll cry if she wins, especially if it's fuck the Charlotte shit. She needs to win clean. There's if no you want to really legitimize her, there's she needs no to way win she wins clean. clean. Not, there's there's no like, way. <laughs> if she it does win, it's going to be some. It's going to be something shitty. Something oh, shady. We got, oh, Byron, we got to get Byron in here because he he's chomping at this one because he really go ahead, Byron. Need live to win. Like I just need live to win. However, knowing how much power Rhonda has with, well, n- not Vince her anymore. Steph- her and Stephanie are Steph- girls. Are girls. I think, and I hate saying this, but I think Rhonda's going to win us. I absolutely hate saying that because Liv needs a legitimate win in her, well, technically her first title defense. I, I just don't see her walking out of it. Why couldn't we? Title? Why couldn't we give her Carmella instead of Bianca? Right or Natty? <laughs> yeah, someone shitty. <laughs> no one we know that Liv can, uh, you know, get some momentum off of. Because Ronda, you know that that's the criminal crim. That bitch at the yeah, top. I, I know that's your first title defense that at SummerSlam. That's a big. That's a big ass spot too. Like she over though. She over though. I, I, I yeah. I, I wanted to win too, but I don't up. know if I can like put my money and lend my voice. And saying that she's going to win right now. The only way she wins is Jacob's way. That is the only way. And that's bad. Yeah. That that's the can. problem. That's it's bad. bad. Yes. I that bad. I don't think it's that bad because you get over the hump of Charlotte and Rhonda. And then you can fucking put her, put her with the dollar people, put her with the Carmelas, put her with the Natalia's, put her with who the fuck ever. Let her get a couple fucking wins. Have her go over fucking Rhea at fucking Survivor Series and then have her fucking lose. No, I how think does it's that, how does your way make Liv look strong though? This that's is like, like saying it, the only it. way you could win is if Charlotte interferes. That makes your champ look okay, so because, shitty because you have to keep Ronda looking fucking alpha fucking strong. You have to Do treat her like the female Brock Lesnar. We whoa 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 whoa. We, we we can't give up Liv for fucking Ronda. I'm sorry. We like <laughs> we, we can't we can't sacrifice Ronda for fucking Liv. Like come on now, Byron. Get come on. Think, like, think now. Not. Think now. Quit being the fan. Quit being the fan. <laughs> We'll be in the fan. We'll be in the fan. Can't help it. Think, think, think about. It. Think <laughs> about the bigger picture. Come on now. Liv, Liv Morgan on on a on a headliner or Ronda Rousey, which is making more goddamn money. Well, I know which is that, making more goddamn money is Ronda I Rousey. I know that. <laughs> I got two things. I got two things for Justin's thing because Justin is right, and here's why. And this is going to go to Byron too. Why Byron's right too? If Charlotte comes back, saves Liv or whatever for her own interest. Liv Morgan's going to be the champion, and they're going to put her on the fucking mid card, and she's going to be starting matches while Charlotte and Ronda are main eventing the pay per views because Joe Annoy still ain't coming to work. So oh, 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 stop, stop! <laughs> don't don't you call the tribal chief by his government name on this podcast with me on here in your presence? You stop that shit right now. Just show him some goddamn respect. He's I, oh. some respect. He was on Raw. And he was on SmackDown last week. Oh, he was at work. Too. I'm so sick of this Kyrie Irving trying to <laughs> Roman Reigns there. I'm sick of it. Stop it. Logan Paul has been to work more times than Roman Reigns, and he just signed with the company. Hey. 
He don't bring in the eyes, okay? He don't. He, oh, he, don't, bring, he don't bring in the eyes oh, like Roman Reigns. Twelve does. million. Oh, come on. Twelve million followers. He ain't the tribal chief. He, he's he, not. He don't have <laughs> both belts. He don't have the bloodline. He's not the one. Which well, he's coming up too. But I'm just combining both your points that you guys are both right in that sense. But bigger picture, bigger picture though, Justin, because you brought bigger picture. It's uh, about to be the end of July. We're gonna get to WrestleMania in a couple months because this year is flying. How do we get from? Because the main goal is Becky versus Ronda one on one at WrestleMania. That's where they're going. Oh, that's what we want. Okay. Well, I mean, that's where they're gonna. That's go. what they want. All that's right. what they that's- want. That's what the rumor was when Ronda signed last year that she would face uh, Charlotte at this WrestleMania and then Becky at next year's WrestleMania. Because that's the thing that they want to go. So that's already a spot. We don't know if that's going to be for a title or not. Because Bianca, if they're doing this story trajectory, she wants to take out all the horse. Well, except well, Bailey didn't get the WrestleMania, but take out the horsewomen at WrestleMania. Bailey coming back soon, right? Well, I, that's another. I know she's been. I know she's been working out. I don't know. I've if she's seen coming that. Back. I don't know. If she's coming back till her best friend comes back. Yeah, I'm gonna that's be right. honest. She's been hanging out with her. The only way I see Sasha updates is through Bailey. Well, Sasha but, Sasha Banks is under contract, and Triple H is running that creative right now. So Sasha Banks will be back. You heard it here from Justin Act, no, from the L7. I, I, I you heard so. it from me first. She will be back because they cannot, and I repeat, they cannot let her go to Khan's company. No. No, no, that's your biggest um that's your biggest Competitor. like nah not that's not what I'm saying. That's your biggest like crossover um female star right now. Like oh, yeah. you can't let 100%, her go. One hundred percent agree. Because Bianca said, I've taken out two horsewomen at WrestleMania, I took out Bailey. There's only one left. And when we get to WrestleMania next year and we're previewing either Bianca or Charlotte winning the rumble, whatever, and it's those two, I'm already thrown out. That's fifty fifty, because you can never bet against the queen. But you can never bet against Charlotte. And I do it every time and I end up losing. But Justin's right because it'll be the problem why Punk left. Liv will be champ, but Ronda and Charlotte are going to be main eventing everything. Yeah. So, Jacob, how does that make Liv look strong if she's not even the main woman on her show as the champ? Yes. you, You make a very valid point here. That being said, WWE is going to do what makes the most fucking money. But if they're smart, they're still going to keep her with the title. Is it ideal? No, not ideal. But would you rather have Liv beginning the show or middle of the show without a title? Or would you rather her be in the beginning or in the middle with a title? Because you're still elevating stars at that point. Is it ideal? No, because I fucking hate that. Nothing comes like nothing should be before the fucking champion. I I'm with you on that one. But what else are you going to do? If we have to deal with the Charlotte and Ronda battle, which is happening. Try and elevate other people while you're at it, at least that way you're not just dealing with the same people every fucking time. Uh, To go back to Justin's thing about more money, which. I mean, I'm all for it because I talked about Survivor Series. I want Bobby and Gunter. More money at Survivor Series. Bianca Belair versus Ronda Rousey makes a lot more than Bianca Belair versus Liv. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And I love Liv Morgan. I really, really do. But you put Ronda and Bianca, they're going to be like, hold on. Can Bianca beat Ronda Rousey now before she gets to Charlotte? Like, that makes money. It does. But, I mean, I, I think a Liv needs to retain somehow. It's just my perfect world. She wins on her own, but we all know she ain't winning on her own. Ain't no way. Yeah. She's Charlotte's helping, ba- or Charlotte or Bailey or someone else, or she's tapping in five minutes. Someone's mm-hmm. going to be pissed off on the review. Oh, oh I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone yes. ain't going to like this decision. Oh, no. And Saturday's going to be something. All right. Main event. No, Brock we're Lesnar here. Challenger. We're here. Since Justin, we'll, we'll call him, since he's wrestling, we'll call him the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. 
It will be 700 days exactly on Saturday's Ooh, jam. My nigga did the counting too. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. I have a Roman Reigns count tracker on my thing saved in my bookmarks. All right, bro. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> That's doing too much. <laughs> You have to keep up, man. I can't be giving out his wrong dates on here. Then I look like an idiot. Then someone comes on the comments and starts cussing me out. True. Justin. Yeah, but, it, yeah, but any comments are better than no comments. Oh, that's the yeah. base logic. That's his bottom. <laughs> well. well his <laughs> get that YouTube al- algorithm shit going. Oh, I'm oh, you know. like a clown <laughs> if you're arguing with a bot in your, in your fucking comments. Right. Yeah. Justin, take it away. This is the last man standing match. It's supposed to be their last match ever. Me personally, uh, if there was going to be their last match ever, they should have did this in Hell in a Cell. That's how you really end something. Also true, but I do like a last man standing match as like the the finisher. Like we got whoop these two fucking hogs are about to get in the ring. They're gonna beat the shit shit out of there so bad that one man ain't gonna be able to get up. Mm-hmm. So Justin, who's winning? Roman, Brock, or Theory? Roman, but God. I gotta give Daisy either credit here by putting them in this last man standing match because, like, ah, I want Theory to hold that briefcase for honestly his sake because I really don't give a fuck for his <laughs> for his sake and like the company's sake for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. But if he was the cash in, this is the moment after a last man standing match is the perfect opportunity to do that. Okay. They go, we they're going to go through some shit to put to put each other down. I think Roman Reigns um, comes out on top. I'm, Brock was a fill-in at this point. So, I think Roman comes out with both belts at the end of the show. Theory doesn't try to cash in. And it's all good. We're on to the next. We're on the Clash of the Castle in the UK. We'll see if um, Drew McIntyre, because he won one on Friday. We'll see if Drew can um, take it from him. With Triple H book it, and this is his best shot. Drew, Drew, okay. yeah, it's his best shot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jacob, Roman, Brock, or Theory? Okay, so if I'm booking this, uh, not as a fan, but as a head of shit, Roman goes over. That that's a no fucking brainer. Roman goes over. Brock collects his money, rides off into the sunset, call him back later. But I would have an attempt by Austin Theory to cash in. Not actually cash in, but an attempt to. So let something happen where everyone's like, oh shit, he's about to cash in, make him kind of elevate him, make him look a little strong, and then have something happen. Some sort of nanny of shit fucking happen. Um, but where he doesn't go, yeah, it doesn't go through. Yeah. That's how I do it. Brock is a fill-in. We all know this. It is what it is. But you're saying because he just attempts to cash in. He doesn't actually like give up the briefcase and the match starts, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying an attempt, okay. but then some sort of Brock Lesnar gets pissed off and throws him F5s and throws him into the crowd to absolutely just Brock Lesnar's his ass. Or so, something along those lines. I need I need I need some excitement of oh shit, he's about to do it. Oh, damn, it didn't happen. Oh, shit. Austin Terry really about just tried cashing in on Roman? Holy shit. Yeah, That's what we need to make everyone look good. Yeah, they'll be fumbling an opportunity if he doesn't at least try to. After a last man standing match, like these niggas, sh- if, they, if they do this match right, these niggas should not be standing afterwards. Right. I agree. How about where the I bet where the Usos like super kick him as he's running down or some shit like that. Yeah, I, I want Jimmy and Jay, the have to hold this nigga up after he wins the match. That's how, that's how brutal I yeah. want this shit to be. Yep, one hundred percent. So, man, Byron, Brett Lesnar, Reigns, or Theory. We all know Roman's walking away as champion. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't see Brock winning this. It's going to be a hell of a match. They're going to beat the shit out of each other. I just saw Brock Lesnar beat up Theory with his own briefcase and look brutal. Um, so just imagine what they're going to do to each other at SummerSlam. <laughs> do you like Jacob's idea that Theory attempts to cash in and somehow someone interferes? Maybe Dolph Ziggler or the Usos. Dolph Ziggler has been interfering a lot with Theory lately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it, Roman's going to win and we're going to 
move on to the next pay per view that he's going to show up at. All right. Since I'm trying to book WrestleMania, because Justin has me think about dollars now. That moment, and, maybe. And uh, SummerSlam needs to end on something crazy. Mm-hmm. Since this match has been rumored at WrestleMania, too, this was supposed to happen at SummerSlam, but something happened. I think Theory attempts to cash in and John Cena AAs him. That would be exciting. So then you have Theory Cena at WrestleMania. There you go. You have it set. You have the reason why. But is Cena still in Vancouver uh, shooting fire. the Peacemaker 2? I, I don't know. I haven't gotten an alert yet. Yeah, but, this okay. is John Cena we're talking how, about. How do you carry that through SummerSlam the Mania? It's pop- I mean, we've done it with like part-timers before because Theory will start calling him out. Cena will come back. The only reason I'm bringing this up, too, is because before Vince left a week or two ago when the second shit came out, he emergency flew to Cena's house. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think he's emergency flying there just to say hi. That's true. But that's who I... It's, it's probably going to be Dolph. It's going to be Dolph Ziggler, and I'm going to be freaking pissed. But I think if you have seen... Because do you want to just end your main event at SummerSlam? Like, eh, it's okay. Because last year, when Cena beat Reigns, Brock Lesnar came out at the end. We were like, oh, shit. So it's like... Yeah. You're right. How do you carry it? But to Jacob thing, if you want to, if theory wants to be that next guy, he will find a way to carry this shit. If it happens. Wasn't the first match between rock and Cena. Wasn't that like a long one year year? buildup? Oh yeah. Yeah. So they definitely can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you had rock and Cena. You don't (laughs) have. Austin Theory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Like, Austin <laughs> Theory can be that guy eventually. He is nowhere near that guy right now. I mean, but Austin literally just has to carry it until prime WrestleMania season. So until, mm-hmm. Febu- until February. Which All I he has to do is, I mean, he's been talking shit about Cena before even Cena showed up for his 20th anniversary. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. It's not in, out, of the, out of the line of possibility that they can run no, that I, until WrestleMania, SummerSlam or WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah but We'll see. I mean, Roman's winning. Uh, like Justin said, if Justin, if it's not as brutal as we're talking about here, then we're going to have a problem. Absolutely. You know what? Here's how you do it. Here's how we book fucking Austin Theory. Okay. Every fucking pay-per-view when Roman shows up mm-hmm. and he attempts to cash in, mm-hmm. have him get screwed out by someone. Let it be Dolph Ziggler. Let it be Drew McIntyre. Let it be the Usos. Let it be whoever. And then let Austin Theory feud with that guy for a month. And every month he gets a new feud to build himself up where he, it just becomes a running joke. Like he goes to cash in, he loses. Like he can't cash in. He keeps getting fucked out of it. Just for him to eventually cash in and take out Roman. That would actually be kind of cool. That helps Justin's thing because that keeps Theory holding the t- uh, b- uh, briefcase as long as he can. Yep. Yep. We all win in that point. Because you're right, Justin and like Jacob, he he can't just go in there and cash in and fail because then it's over for him. Yeah, he's, unless no, he wins no the Royal Rumble, back. there's no coming back after that. Yeah. If he, yeah, if he cashes in and fails, he's he's over. The fans hate him. Like not like typical like heel hate. Like they generally just generally don't fuck with him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, Baron Corbin's come back with happy and all that stuff. Damian Priest never came back when he failed. You mean uh, Damian Sandow? Damian Sandow, I'm sorry. Yes, Damian, he never came back. He was so fucking over, too. Yep, he never came back. So, we'll see. We'll see. That's SummerSlam. I mean, Roman's going to hold the titles up around 10-58, And we're going to be like, huh, Roman won. On to Drew versus Roman. And that place in England is going to be freaking rocking. And Roman's going to silence them all at the end of it. It's going to be goddamn hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. I really want my boy Drew to win. I know he's not going to. I'll be, uh, nah, he won't, but... It makes uh, sense for Drew to win, but it makes absolutely zero sense for Drew to win. Why does it make zero sense for him to win? Because he wants to see a whole Rock at WrestleMania thing? Yeah. What's okay. going to sell more? Roman versus Rock or Roman versus or, uh, Rock versus Drew? Just because, well, just because you're in on. your own country does not mean you have to need the win. That is true, but nope. Business standpoint, if he wins in his home country, that country is going to want to do more deals. That is the only reason Jinder Mahal won that fucking title off Randy 
because they're promoting that India tour, which they made like 400 million off of. It's the only mm-hmm. reason those we have the Saudi shit because the Saudi people wanted Goldberg to beat Bray. And what the fuck happened? I mean, WWD is already oh, pretty fucking... established in the UK. Like, I don't see. I don't see them pandering them to the UK. But this fans. would be their biggest pay per view in the UK ever. This is like a pay per view. Like this is Wait, uh, well, not, not ever. And, uh, they, they, is the, it bigger than the one they had at Wembley Stadium back in the day at SummerSlam? No. I'll have to check. Yeah. This one's 92. like ninety-two. Um, where's it? Yeah, where, where's this um at? Where's this about let to be ch- at? Let me check. Clash of the think... um ca- castle. Clash of it's fucking like Wales or some shit. Yeah, it's I like seats. Say it's se- Wales. The seats like seventy-two thousand. I think that Wembley show had like 90. Yeah, because that was when the Legion of Doom had their awesome fucking entrance with the motorcycles and shit. Yeah, yeah so they, this is their first pay-per-view since SummerSlam 92 in the UK. This It's not their first. They used to do like, uh, first, probably SummerSlam, but they used to do um, UK pay-per-views yearly. Well, this is what they're saying. It's making WWE's first major stadium event. So, like, major stadium event. And the company's first major event in general would take place in the UK since 2003 Insurrection. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, that is where... uh, Yeah. And then, like, in the first 24 hours when they announced tickets, they sold 59,000 in pre-sale. God damn. It's going to be a big deal. And right now, it's, it's literally the only match... Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre, Sheamus. <laughs> I, I bet of all those NXT UK guys are going to be littered throughout that card too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ben Balor better have like a big moment over there. Gunter, yep. Gunter, yeah. Well, all right, just some quick hits, real quick. Uh, Claudio, aka Cesaro, won his first heavyweight title ever. Oh, he beat that little nigga, Jonathan Gresham. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was his first title ever. And to go from that, after that loss, Jonathan Grisham asked for his release. Really? Yes. Because yeah. he said to- he was, like, set up with, like, the way he's been treated. But I actually saw, like, a tweet before even the match started that Jonathan Gresham came out and said, like, you can have like a bunch of white guys have no personality and everyone's like ranting and raving about them. But like when a black wrestler, you know, who's great at wrestling doesn't have a like so-called character, everyone's like, Oh, he needs a character, but they don't like count that he's a great wrestler. So Um, he asked for his release. He hasn't been released yet, but he, uh, he won his first, first title world title ever, which is, Crazy to say, because like we talked about Cesaro, he never got over the hump here, but his first title in any promotion, shout out to him. We already talked about Gresham. We already said shout out to Ray Mysterio for his 20th anniversary. It's kind of crazy how Roman, not Roman, Randy, John, Brock, Ray have all had like their 20th anniversaries. Yeah. All debuted in 2002. Yeah. I remember. I was there. So. Uh, and hey. that, oh, go ahead, Jacob. We got to say okay. the Jonathan Gresham thing. Like, man, that's got to stink. You Ring of Honor finally gets their first big pay per view they've had pretty much since the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Jonathan Gresham has been carrying that fucking company mm-hmm. through the pandemic. This company that should not have survived theoretically. Oh, yep. uh, yep. Tony Khan. And then the first big pay per view, like he loses, like. That fucking sucks. Yeah. Like yeah. That, that 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 fucking sucks. I wonder where yeah. he's gonna end up going. I mean, he wants our ring of honor. Tony Khan owns AEW. See there. He got impact with his with his uh, wife. I did he not could. know that was Jordan Grace's husband until like two weeks ago. That nigga's so tiny. <laughs> you really didn't know that? <laughs> I mean, I, I knew she was married to some wrestler and then like I saw him on AEW a couple weeks ago, and then like I did some research. I'm like, oh shit, she is bigger than this nigga, like way bigger than this nigga. She posts them all the time on Twitter. <laughs> Man, you be one of the. Per- I follow her on Instagram, so I don't, okay. see, I don't be seeing them on Instagram. But you'd be one of the people she would be spazzing at on Twitter. Uh, one of Byron's favorite things with <laughs> AEW. Uh, Darby Ain't my fault that nigga small. <laughs> Darby was at a Comic Con this past Saturday, and he got jumped as part of their storyline, and. 
I know Byron loved that because it was an on-site thing. For the story I line. just love a good on-site rivalry. Like whenever I see you, it's on. Just I just love it. Continue that. All right. Uh, last two things before we close. Closing. Open question. Since we ask it now, where's MJF at? At home. Collecting He's chilling out. Waiting out his contract. It looked like that's crazy. I think it- he is not waiting out his fucking contract. <laughs> God damn. Fickle, fickle, fickle. He is not waiting out his fucking contract. Man. He's just hanging out. And when Punk comes back, boom, MGF is showing up. It's been two <laughs> months. It's been two goddamn months. Niggas about to forget about him. They haven't said a word about him on the show. I know, that, was, a damn that, was ba- thing. that was bad. When he walked out, they didn't say a word about him and they didn't say anything the week after. That was bad. Yeah. It's perfect. Holy fuck. I got three wrestling fans. This is fucking beautiful fucking storytelling. Make people forget all about him. Don't fucking mention him. Make this shit look real as fuck. Like Cody then, Rhodes leaving? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I might have been wrong about... Uh, you no, know, oh, no. You were beating me. Cody Rhodes you, never leave. You were colossally movie. wrong about that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cody Rhodes will you never come to WrestleMania. Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were that being so said. in the AEW back. Oh, there ain't no way this dude go back to WWE. He, he running the AEW. Ain't no way he going to leave. Oh, that nigga just popped up at WrestleMania. This nigga shake it was like, oh, no. Fuck. <laughs> I felt that tagged. Four and a half star match. <laughs> Cody <laughs> Rose was going to win that damn briefcase until he got hurt. <laughs> Type shit. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, no, MJF is just chilling out, and I'm, I'm, I'll I'm die on that hill, too. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I highly doubt I will be. Dude, I hope you're right. I really do. I hope AEW don't fumble that. Yeah, oh, they, they can't. They cannot. They, mm-mm. No, no, no. But what's he, wait, is he really going to come back and take on Punk? Because Kenny Omega's coming back. You're going to instantly probably throw him in the title picture. I'm not sure. It, I don't. I'm not sure. It's going to come down to who's coming back first, Fair and enough. who's doing what. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I feel like Punk comes back before Omega does. This guy really got know. hurt after winning the title. I'm like, bro, what? How did Omega hurt himself? What's wrong well, with he, him? He, he, he was long time off. Yeah, he was he's like either a long concussion time. or a neck injury or something mm-hmm. like that. He was gone. I for think he's seeing like a concussion specialist like every other week or something like that. Oh, yeah. Punk probably he, be- he had a bunch of injuries. Like basically, he just kept waiting and waiting for them to get worked on. All right. Uh, last quick hit for Jacob. Where is Tessa Blanchard? Ooh, I knew you were about to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, she did that indie show. And got did she hit. win? AJ kicked her ass out. Well, oh, she did. Dang. <laughs> what? Remember, she got fired off that. Oh, the indie show. I'm talking about the AJ. I'm talking about the indie show, not women in wrestling. I'm yeah, not talking about wow. Yeah, because AJ kicked her ass out of that. Um, no, she did that indie show, and I I didn't hear any major drama out of it. Not yet. I mean, I do that that indie show was what three weeks ago now. Hey man, it takes, find out. it takes time. It took us 35 years to find out Vince was paying women off with WWE funds. So. Tessa Blanchard must be the storm front of the pro, of pro wrestling. Bro, no one wants. She's terrible. She is nah. She she's bad heat. Like, like I, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I really don't know. But I have I have a random question for you guys about Tessa. Been, no, no, it's completely irrelevant to Tessa. It's just another random blurb I'm throwing out there because it's been talked about here in the Mason household. Oh, okay. huh? mm-hmm. all right, so. Gunther lost a metric shitload of weight. Yes. Looks, yes. Looks everything. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think he looks less intimidating now than when he did before. He looked like a fucking tank before. He just looks like a skinny fucking dude now. I've, Agree, disagree. I've not watched SmackDown in a while. Let me see what he was looking like. Oh, bro, it's it's wild. You would have been a crazy same. transformation. Do oh, I think he's less not. menacing? Yeah, I think he looks way less intimidating now. That dude looked like a fucking mountain. That's a good question. I do prefer fat Gunther over this new skinny dude. He wasn't even really fat. He was just 
You just built. You that's, just a good, that's a good you question. Fucking unit. You, that, shit, that shit came from Vince. He was like, if you want to come up here, you got to uh, yep, take 100%, some pounds off. That is, 100%. That is Vince McMahon all the way. <laughs> yep. yep. He, he got that Kevin Owens treatment. <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent but yeah but both me and my wife think that like yeah he looks way less intimidating so i'm just wondering what your guys opinion is i've never that. thought i've never thought of that but that's a good question and i'm with you they're off these like google images i'm looking at like <laughs> there's there's like a recent one where he has to ic belt he really don't look <laughs> intimidating he really does look like just like a small just like random dude like not big he just looks like a taller uh Bartholomew or whatever the fuck is one lackey is. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you were talking about looking skinny and not intimidating. I thought you were about to say he looks like a taller Adam Cole. <laughs> oh Dang. shit! I Dang. mean, that's always the big. That's why I'm, I can't answer because that's always the big thing. Everyone gets on that boy. I mean, Pat McAfee. That's how that feud started. I mean, like, I look over Adam the Cole fact can that, go- I look over the fact that Adam Cole's tiny because, like, like you're about to say, that nigga can work, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Hey, but Gresham can work, and his girl's bigger than him. Britt Baker is more muscular than Adam Cole. Man, but Gresham is like tiny, tiny. He's, he five, like, he's he, five foot four. Oh, that's sh- he's shorter than Rey Mysterio, bro. Like that nigga is <laughs> tiny. Hey, he's a built dude. I'm like, just, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not. I'm oh, not he's a unit. A, I'm not. He's a unit for sure. But like, guy. oh man, he is if, so small. Like, I'm not on the Vince thing. If you can go, you just you. I'll put you in a spot. Oh, oh man, can't go. Technically, I, like I really don't want to see him leave fucking AEW Ring of Honor just because I want to watch him and Dan or Brian Danielson go at it. Ooh, that'd be a great that'd be a great. Oh, it'd be so fucking good! Holy shit! All right, All right. or him and Joe, Mojo. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be good. Careful man. now, Paul of X back. The poacher is here. Think some Mojo's some- going back. Someone's got, someone's going back in the next two years. Someone's going back. If, if there was ever a real chance for Johnny Gargano to go back to WWE, it is right now. One hundred percent. He's like, I could see that. Now Triple H was involved before Cody Rhodes made his jump. I'd be like, yeah, I can, I can see that. I feel like I see it. Triple I'm- H was the last person Cody Rhodes talked to when he came, like when he uh, came back, like when they had that an hour talk before his match. I feel like if you're a mm-hmm. men's wrestler right now, the e- or women's, uh, I'll, I'll know about women's. I feel like WWE's women's like the top is going to be harder to crack than like, if you're a man, like, no, I agree with that. Like, I was going like, to say cra- like H- cracking, cracking the top of the men's division will be easier in WD as opposed to AEW, in my opinion. No so, one, 100% right. Cause mm-hmm. at the top of the women, well now Bianca, well, there are six. You ain't getting past. Yeah, there's the yeah. four. Oscar Bianca. You ain't getting past that. You really ain't getting past the four. Because whenever they want the title back, they're getting the titles back. And you know something else? I wonder. I wonder how many people who just signed with AEW because you know they constantly sign people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder how many people are now going like, "Holy shit! I wish I would have waited." Mm-hmm. How many of the XNXT people are like, fuck? We got Triple H in charge now. Uh, yeah, Tony probably got them on three year contracts. Like, they stuck for a minute. Uh, uh, also, we didn't talk about this. Tully Blanchard is now out of AEW and Ring of Honor, also now. Why? Because he has prior commitments with a prison ministry service. Okay. Oh, Byron, what I, were you about that. to say? What? <laughs> What <laughs> you were about to say something? What the hell? I was gonna say, um, in, what, in regards to what Jacob said, like, if people should have waited, I was like, kind of say, like, no one knew that this bench shit was about to come out. So, like, how long essentially, like, would they have, yeah, how had long, to wait? how long they gonna wait for like Vince to like get pushed out? Because, like, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, Vince always wins until now, so mm-hmm. they probably thought he was gonna be on top of that company forever. Nah. You know, it just makes more interesting the Royal Rumble because we will have some people return at the Royal Rumble this year. Mm, yeah. um, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast, listening to our Vince McMahon and SummerSlam preview. As Justin said, when it comes to the review, 
Someone is going to be mad at the live Rondo. Where there's not going to be no consensus happiness. Someone going to be pissed off. That's going to lose someone the um, pick em sheet. Like, oh yeah, that shit going. <laughs> that match is about to make shit so interesting. Fuck, I'm not confident for SummerSlam at all. And now it's probably I'm probably gonna be the one that's pissed off. I, I, I just got no, because I'll be pissed either way. Because I'm the only way I'm happy is Liv wins clean, and that's not happening. So I'm already halfway pissed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, confidence what sheets. Other but, options. You have, you have, you have no other options. Yeah, that's what makes me halfway pissed. Booked yourself into a corner. It's not, not smart booking. But hey, and right. your best booking option is what I said to get Which, out of it. They, they should just did um, Charlotte um, Ronda run it back. Let Liv keep the briefcase. Liv should have cashed in between the two of them. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, then you have a win started. over. Then you have a win over Charlotte and Ronda as your first title to. That's almost that's Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's true. They gave Liv that moan, but low key fumble it. They weren't thinking. Uh, they yeah, but Ron, but Charlotte wanted to get married, go on her honeymoon. She's probably going to be there Sunday for Ric Flair's last match. So, so if she doesn't, technically, if she doesn't come back that SummerSlam, oh, then when Liv's does she losing. return? Liv, well, Liv's losing. That's well, yeah, I, w- I wasn't going to talk about that. <laughs> I was just going to say, when does Charlotte return if she doesn't return at SummerSlam? Whenever the hell she wants. Right, that's true. <laughs> Where's that Ric Flair <laughs> match at? It Monday? Uh, let's actually look it up, because the bits are close. It has to be close. If, um, Jeff Jarrett's going to... Um, that's he, true. He's wrestling Jeff Jarrett. Uh, July. What the fuck is this? Oh, it's in Nashville. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's a fair right. I was like, the <laughs> municipal auditorium. There's a countdown thing on Scar Starcast. Starcast. Uh, wow. And Andrade is going to be in the match too. I forgot. Yeah. And Jay Lethal. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Gresham mm-hmm. is going to be on that card too. Look at that. Which I, you know what I, I've said this before on this podcast. Fucking, if you guys follow Ric Flair's Instagram, holy shit, that man is still cutting hella good promos. Yeah, but he's talking about he his last be in this match. match. Lit. He shouldn't be in this match, man. Did he post any like post himself taking any bumps or anything? That's what I'm worried about. I know the old man. He's posted like he's been training, training with people. Like he's been he's been working out. Although what's hilarious to see uh, Ric Flair get busted open in a parking yeah. lot by oh, Jerry. Oh. And Jerry. Yeah, that's that that video. <laughs> Well, he shouldn't be in this match, but we'll see how that goes. We'll talk about that on the review. But thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Make sure you like, rate, comment, subscribe anywhere you listen. If you listen on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all the places. Thank you for your continued support, especially in all of the countries not in the United States who decide to tune in to us. We greatly appreciate it. With that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening. The L7C podcast signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.